Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. With us today, I have my good friends Iman with us. And on her, I'm creating a look that is, you know, complementative to her, complementative, complementary, you know what I mean. Something that looks really good on her. It accentuates her natural beauty, but in a really modern way. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Glow Recipe Hyaluronic Acid Moisturizer and using this to prep our model skin with before the makeup. This is actually my first time using this and I must say it's it's more of a watery texture than I expected it to be, which isn't a bad thing at all. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a thinner formula than what I'm usually used to using for skin prep, but I am pleasantly surprised. It's it's adding in that drink of hydration to the skin. And I think if you're someone who likes a moisturizer that doesn't feel heavy or greasy, you'd really like this one. So for foundation, I'm using the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation in the shade Maple. I've patch tested it to her chest and shoulders to see if we got a good match, and we did. We got it on our first try, which <laughs> it usually doesn't happen, I promise. It usually takes me two or three times before getting the right shade, but I, I got lucky today. I'm not using a lot of this either. I'm gonna end up achieving a light to medium coverage with this, which is perfect because I am gonna use powders that have coverage in them too. And by the time I'm done with the complete makeup application, I still want her skin to shine through. Our model, Iman, has beautiful skin. So I wanna take advantage of that by showcasing it in a way where we're not covering it all up, but actually complementing it with the products we choose and how much we choose to use of them. Next, I'm taking this Tarte Concealer in the shade Mahogany, and I've mixed this into the foundation we used before this on the back of my hands and using this to add warmth to her skin, mostly to the perimeter of the face and you know the forehead, um, jawline beneath her cheekbones. I love using concealers for this reason, especially really you know deep concealer shades like the one you just saw me holding up there. If you're a makeup consumer or you know or a makeup enthusiast and you're just watching this to learn how to do your you know makeup on yourself you'd probably be better off buying a product that's only a couple shades deeper than your natural skin tone to achieve this effect. But for the makeup artist, this is really a great way to go about this, using what you have and making it work in terms of the shades you have. When I first started in makeup, I, I didn't have a lot of shades to work with because I didn't, I didn't have a lot of money <laughs> to, to buy a lot of stuff. So I would only have a handful of shades, including at least one really deep shade, one really fair shade, and a few in between. And then I'd mix them into the foundation and different pigments I had to create what I needed. And honestly, I still do this. My makeup kit is very, very minimal, believe it or not. So, um... Anyway, as you can see here, I've head back to my sponge and I'm just pressing that product in, diffusing it out and creating a seamless blend, making sure to bring a little of this down the neck and up onto the ears as well. For concealer, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer in the shade 9 and applying a bit of this to the under eye along with the outer corners of the mouth, cupid's bow, and chin before blending it out with my sponge. The reason I applied this to those areas around the mouth is because I want to highlight those areas by applying a lighter shade to the outer corners. It's going to lift it, you know, a little bit, especially when we add back the definition to the lips with a lip liner later on. It'll, you know, it'll all come together eventually, but everyone's going to be different here in terms of this placement. You can make it your own. I know some people like to use a bit more concealer than what I'm using today. You know, they bring it up to highlight the forehead and brow bone and bring it down the center of the nose and all that, but I don't really want to take it there today with the glam. It's fun doing the contour and highlighting everywhere, and I, and I love the dramatic results it gives, but by the time I'm done with the makeup, I want Iman to look like Iman. You know what I mean? I, I just want her to look like and feel like the best most refreshed version of herself without looking like a whole different person. So while I do use a lot of different products today, we're using a very little of them to keep the look soft. Okay, moving on to the powders, I'm using the Ben Eye Luxury Powder in the shade Buff and using this to set the under eye concealer with a powder puff. I usually use a translucent setting powder. I couldn't find the one I wanted, so I used this and it worked out perfectly. Like when you see the side by side here, 
th this powder looks insanely beautiful on her. It's like this shade was made for her, truly. But more than anything, I love the formula of these Ben Eye powders. They're silky smooth and they look incredible on the skin. They come in different shades and it's, it's usually something you have to get in a pro makeup store or online. I get them through an online retailer called, um, it's called Camera Ready Cosmetics. I'll link them down below, but yeah, such a beautiful, beautiful powder. I even take whatever I have left in the puff to set different areas of the skin as well. Now using this Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Powder, I'm using this to further powder and set the skin around the face. This is another powder formula that's really great as well. The difference between this one and the one we just used is that it has more coverage to it and it's a pressed formula. I can't remember the, off the top of my mind here what the shade is that I'm using. I'll find out and I'll link it down below, but I'm really loving how clean the skin is looking so far. We're using just enough product to assure that the makeup holds up throughout the day, but not so much where it starts to look cakey and all that. Next up with this one size turn up the base powder foundation in the shade Dark 4G, I'm using this to add a little more warmth to the skin. It wasn't really noticeable here on camera, but in person, it was lacking something. Of course, you can just use your bronzer for this step if you want, but this is essentially the same thing. It's a pressed powder pigment. What's nice about using powder foundations to bronze with is, is that you usually have more options to choose from in terms of the undertones. So I went with a deep, warm, golden undertone here, and I think it made a pretty big difference. I love it. Now, once I have this applied on, I'm using this NARS blush in the shade Exhibit A. Look at how intense this looks in the packaging. It's kind of scary, right? But trust and believe this is one of the most beautiful blushes money can buy. In fact, it's one of the first products I ever purchased from NARS years ago. Until this day, it's definitely in my top I'd say my top five favorite must-have blushes. It gives the most natural, sun-kissed look to your skin. And this works on every single skin tone, from deep to fair and everyone in between. How I use this is I'll press the, the brush into the pigment, tap the excess off onto the back of my wrist or hand or whatever it is, and build up the pigment in the areas of the skin the sun naturally hits. So the apples of the cheeks, a little on the brow bone, across the nose, maybe a little on the forehead, and definitely across the chest and shoulders. This color mimics that, that slight um, like red sun-kissed hue your skin gets after laying on the beach. Really, just, just such an incredible blush and a must have for me. So moving right along, I'm using the Dalba First Spray Serum to melt those powders into the skin. It's gonna take those powders we've used, the, the under eye powder, the foundation powder, the bronzer, the blush, and transform the finish of them so it has that skin-like sheen. It's gonna look a little crazy at first, but as it dries down while we do the eye makeup, you'll see how the finish of the makeup begins to take hold. So in the meantime, I'm using the House Labs Optic Intensity Eco Eyeliner in the shade Amethyst Matte and use this to start on the eye makeup. I'm gonna zoom in here a bit so you can really see kind of what's happening here with this. I'm placing this liner across the complete upper lash line, keeping it thinner towards the inner corner, but making the line bolder towards the outer corner. Don't worry so much about getting this perfect, by the way, because I'm taking an eyeshadow blending brush to diffuse this all out anyways. Another thing Thing I want to point out here is that I didn't really set the lid with powder as you can see from the other eye. If there's any creasing happening from the concealer I just take my finger and blend it out before using the liner because I do find when using an eyeliner in, in the way that I'm using it here applying it onto the eyelid that, that doesn't have any powder on it yet does help with getting an easier blend with liners. If it's too matte, the liner kind of grips on and, and doesn't really blend out. So yeah, if you're experiencing that issue, that may be why. But as you can see here, there's really no proper technique I'm using. This is very beginner friendly because it's hard to mess this up. Just blend and smudge, blend and smudge. 
After this, I'm using the purple from this Huda Beauty Color Block palette and using this to not only help set the eyeliner, but also to intensify the purple and to further smoke it out. Honestly, this is where you can get creative with this and put your own twist on it. You can add a little shimmer or you can use a black eyeliner at the lash line to make it more dramatic or even pop in a pink or peachy shade in the crease to build up the color story. You can really have fun with it. It really just comes down to what complements you and your eye shape, which is the whole premise of this tutorial. I find this purple color complements Iman's eye color. It's gonna bring out those beautiful green hues. And uh, it, by the way, here real quick, I, I'm just taking that eyeliner and running it through the lower lash line before diffusing it out like we had on the upper lid. But yeah, so as I was saying, it comes down to what works for you and using techniques that actually complement and accentuate your beauty rather than compete with it. Does that make sense? Like even Iman said it best here. This is a very modern approach to makeup. It's still glam and it shows that you can have fun with color, but in a way where it looks effortless and understated. So I say all that to say, put your own flavor into this and do what makes you feel best. Next up for mascara, I'm using the new One Size Fantasize Mascara and running this through the top and bottom lashes. I'm really getting in there at the root of the lash with this and wiggling it through to the end. I don't know why I said that weird. Wiggling it through to the ends, there we go. And look at that, with a little mascara, it adds that touch of drama and intensity. I'm really enjoying how this is coming together without false eyelashes, so. I'm not gonna use any today. And I'm gonna move right along to the brows using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze Styling Wax. How I use this is I first run the product through the hairs against the direction they naturally grow in. And this is to get the brow hairs fully saturated with the product. Yeah, it's gonna look, you know, it's gonna look wild at first, <laughs> but have faith, I promise. It comes together once I start brushing them back down into the position I want them to dry in. And if you're into a super strong hold brow product, I think you'd really like this one. I find it does hold your brows into place all day but you gotta work with it quickly. And besides a little brow powder I added in off camera, just to the tail of the brow, this is all she really needs. Brows are looking clean, groomed, and polished. And with the brow powder palette I used, I'm also gonna use this to draw back in her freckles. This is a little touch of detail that really makes a big difference here. It adds back that realism to the makeup, giving into that illusion of barely there makeup, especially if you tend to go fuller coverage with your complexion. Just add in a couple beauty marks and it changes the game. To start on the lips, I'm using this Kosas Hotliner Lip Liner in the shade Peak and using this to trace the borders of her lips with. I think this is the perfect shade for her. We're not getting crazy with it and overlining and all that. I, I'm keeping it settled by running this right along her natural lip line. These are the new lip liners from Kosas that they just released. Um, I will say at first, I didn't know how I felt about them, but now that I've worked with them a few times, I really love them. It's a drier formula, so if you're applying it onto a slippery surface, you're not gonna get the most color payoff. So I found that if I set the lip borders with a little bit of powder first, the lip liner will have something to grip onto. And because it's a drier formula, it doesn't move around. It's extremely long wear. I mean, it's really, really long wear, so. For the center of the lip, I'm using this Laura Mercier lipstick in the shade Nude Natural and just tapping this in. There's not a lot of product on the brush. I just want a light wash of color to highlight the center of the lip before we apply on the lip gloss. The gloss I'm using today is from Nova Beauty in the shade T, and I'm applying this right on top for that high shine finish. This does have a slight hue of color to it, and it has a, a little sparkle in it, which gives a really nice effect to the overall look. I'm really happy with how this lip turned out. It's perfect for the daytime, uh, the nighttime. It'd be perfect for a bridal lip color, and it goes with any eye makeup that you choose to pair with it. Just, you know, it's a really, really pretty lip, I think. So after this, I'm going to finish off with my plexiglass illuminator and tap this into the highest points of her face with my makeup sponge. We're filming this on the 4th of July. She's going to a barbecue after this. She's going to be in the sunlight. So 
I want her skin to just look radiant and expensive and luxurious. And this will give us just that, but it won't look glittery. You know what I mean? It'll just look like fresh, luminous skin. And if you have this, try bringing it down to the chest and shoulders. It adds that glow to the skin that ties in the whole look, which really makes this the perfect last step and how we created this modern glam on my naturally beautiful friend, Iman. I hope y'all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.